Hello everyone and welcome to Corn Snake Corral. This is going to be Behavior Education's new series about corn snakes and possibly some of the other colubrids that we have here. And it's going to revolve, of course, around my areas of expertise, which are behavior and training. For those of you whose first time this may be viewing our channel, just because of your interest in corn snakes, you may be wondering who I am. And some of you might be wondering, what's a corn snake if you're new to snakes altogether? I'm Lori Cherini, a certified professional dog trainer knowledge assessed through CCPDT. I hold a certificate in applied animal behavior from the University of Washington, and I am a fear-free certified professional animal trainer through Fear Free Pets. I have an associate of applied science degree in zookeeping, and I'm currently the director of Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and owner and operator of Behavior Education, LLC. I'm almost finished with my bachelor's degree in animal behavior and health, and I'll be moving on to a master's program in applied animal behavior. So what's a corn snake? Well, the scientific name for this snake species is Pantherophis guttatus. You wanna always check what the current taxonomic, scientific, or Latin name is because these things can change. But as of when I recorded this video, it's Pantherophis guttatus. It's a North American colubrid snake that has a slender body and averages about four feet long. And they are a generalist species able to thrive in many areas of the United States eating varied prey. As an animal, what will this series be about? As an animal trainer and behaviorist, this series will focus on my areas of expertise, which include corn snake behavior, enrichment, training, and welfare. For a detailed corn snake care guide, I recommend Reptifiles. I'll put a link to their information in the video description. I will also be sharing other recommended resources with you, such as books, scientific papers, and websites. I would like to know what you would like to see in this video series. I plan to include corn snakes in your homes. And if you watched our Royals at the Ranch series, you know that I included viewer video clips and photos of Royal Pythons in homes. And if viewers send me photos and short video clips of your corn snakes, I'll do the same in this series. What would you like to see included in this series that is within my field of study? Let me know in the comments and you can email me your short video clips or photos of your corn snakes to behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. How would you like to meet some corn snakes and see some of them training? My first snake almost 30 years ago was as a pet. This time I began my journey with snakes as an animal trainer. So I thought that it was fitting that in this first episode of Corn Snake Corral, that we started the series with some corn snake training. That's what you're going to get to see right now. We're going to start out with Nissa as our first learner. And this is the first time in a while that I have asked her to shift out of her enclosure at all. When she was in a smaller tank, I asked her to shift out fairly often. She was in a top opening terrarium and she got pretty good at shifting out onto a temporary station, which was just a tub with a PVC perch built onto the top. But since moving her into this 36 by 18 by 18 enclosure, I haven't asked her to shift out. And so I just wanted to remind her what it was like to follow the target over her enclosure threshold towards some sort of station. I wanted to weigh her, so I lifted her up and put her on the scale. After she took her reinforcer, her body language did not change when I touched her or when I picked her up. And that's how I knew it was okay to go ahead and move her onto the scale where she continued to eat. And I thought as we're watching her finish her meal and we can get a close up picture of how she looks, I would tell you a little bit about who Nissa is and where she came from. She was hatched on July 15th, 2019, and she arrived here on March 10th, 2020. She was produced by Mindy and TJ Fitzgerald at Silent Hill Reptiles. And she is a Carmel Miami, and she is 100% heterozygous sunkissed and blood red and 60 cent percent possible heterozygous for cinder. I honestly don't know what all that means. I'm just reading you the information that I was given from Mindy and TJ when they sent her to me. Her sire is a 2017 corn snake that they have named Hannibal, who is a honey, blood red Miami, 100% het for cinder and 66% possible het amel. 
And her dam is a 2017 corn snake named Beatrix. And she's a Carmel Miami 100% het sunkist, cinder 66% possible het, amelanistic blood red. Wow, that was a lot. And to be honest, I don't even know what all that is. But I thought I'd share it with you and maybe it's something we can explore during the series. Nissa got very distracted as I was trying to shift her back into her enclosure. Now, whether that was because it's tougher to shimmy or slither up a smooth surface like this plexiglass door than it is to slither down it, or whether she was just interested in exploring outside of her enclosure, I'm not sure. But she was pretty distracted and she wasn't really following her target back into the enclosure. And when I offered her the reinforcer outside of her enclosure, she ignored it. So I picked her up and she ended up taking the reinforcer on her way back to her enclosure. So I just went ahead and put her inside and we were done. Now, while she was out, I did clean her enclosure and her water. Now, Tuvok's a little bit different story. Tuvok has always been extremely shy and he used to hide all the time when he first arrived. And through target training, he started to slowly emerge from hiding when it was feeding time until he got more and more confident that he would actually target all the way out of hiding and up and partially out of his top opening enclosure, but he never came all the way out. He would come about halfway or two thirds of the way out. And then I moved him into this 36 by 18 by 18 PVC enclosure and you can see that his old 10 gallon tank is in there with him, which he still gets in and uses from time to time. So I haven't removed it. He's gained a lot of confidence since we've been target training within this enclosure, but he still has never targeted out of the enclosure completely. He has targeted over the door, just to the edge of the door, over the threshold, but he's never targeted out. Now I was going to move him out to weigh him and to clean his enclosure, However, he recoiled when I touched him, his body completely tensed up, his body tone changed, and all of those were signals that I needed to back off and leave him alone, that he was not comfortable with me picking him up while he was eating. And so that's why I picked up Nissa and not him. Nissa was completely relaxed while I was handling her as she ate, Tuvok was not. And I always make sure that I acquiesce to the snake's once, as long as it's not an emergency. Normal arrived at the same time as Tuvok from the same breeder, but they aren't from the same clutch. And he is completely the opposite personality of Tuvok. Normal has always been confident. He's comfortable and relaxed when handled. He's confident coming out of his enclosure. He target trains fairly well, although during this session, he seemed a bit lazy. And I say that because sometimes he targets very, very quickly from his starting location to wherever the target is. And this is a station that I've made to put on top of a baby scale so the snakes are more comfortable shifting onto it. He's been on this many, many times, both exploring it on his own and having me target him onto it. So he just didn't seem very motivated during this target training session, and that's no problem. He doesn't get penalized for that. I just lower my criteria and I make the session easier and less challenging than I initially intended. So I ended up just having him shift his head and neck onto the station and then change direction to his right. And then that's when I go ahead and deliver the reinforcement to him. It was pretty clear that he wasn't feeling like coming out any further and I leave him to eat on the station. Now, the reason that I did that instead of reaching in and taking him out or reaching and putting him back in and shutting the doors is I wasn't in a hurry and all I needed to do was change his water. I didn't need to do a whole enclosure clean. And he's very comfortable with my presence and proximity. And so I was easily able to reach in, take his water dish out, put his water dish back while he was eating. Now we're gonna get back to Tuvok. We're gonna get to see him do one more session and he's inside this paper towel roll. I wasn't sure where he was at first and then I realized he was inside the paper towel roll. So I'm just asking him to follow the target out of hiding. And that's a very useful tool for target training. If the snake's in their hide and you want them to come out for some reason, or you just wanna check on them and assess their welfare because they've been hiding a while, 
and they're due to eat, or it would be okay if they ate, or if the reinforcer is going to be something other than the food, you can teach them to target out of their hide. And that's what I am showing you here. Tuvok targeted out of his hide. Now I held on to the prey because I wanted more of his body out of the hide so that I could assess its condition. And he is doing a great job of demonstrating for you that corn snakes can constrict their prey. They don't always, but they are perfectly capable of constricting their prey. And while he's doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Tuvok. Tuvok was hatched on July 21st, 2019. He arrived on September 10th, 2019. He was produced by Joe Phelan at Port City Pets. And he is an anery tessera heterozygous amelanistic possible heterozygous for stripe and strawberry. Getting back to normal, he's going to do a second session. And since he came partway out onto the scale and the station during his first repetition in this session, during his second repetition, I'm just asking him if he wouldn't mind moving around one of the legs of the scale station. And I'm asking him to follow the target with his head and body around this leg. And he does a great job. He's really focusing, he's concentrating, and he follows the target with his head, neck, and part of his body to encircle one of these legs of this upside down stool that I've made this station out of. And I'm just gonna ask him to follow it with his head between the two legs on this left side. And then I'm gonna deliver reinforcement. And this is just a second step in getting his whole body out onto the scale station and teaching him to position in a specific way on the station when I ask him to. This is actually when I go ahead and change his water and clean it and put it back. I did that as he was eating his second reinforcer from his second repetition during this training session. And I thought while he is on the scale station and you're able to see him clearly, we would go over some information about him. I do want to point out that he does put himself away. He finishes eating his mouse and then he goes ahead and he shifts himself back into the enclosure. So I didn't have to target him back into the enclosure. I didn't have to pick him up. I didn't have to put a puzzle feeder in there to entice him. I did literally nothing. And when he was finished on the scale, he put himself away. And I think that that is wonderful. And if I have time, I leave them on the station, on the scale, on whatever I have asked them to shift into or onto, because sometimes it's a carrier. If I have time, I let them stay there as long as they want to after they've eaten, because that helps them become comfortable with that item and more apt to shift that onto it quicker the next time because they're familiar with it. They have had a positive and safe experience with it. And so I let him take his time. His name is Normal, and he is a normal wild-type colored corn snake. However, he is heterozygous for honey and possible heterozygous for motley. He also came from Port City Pet. He was produced by Joe Phelan. Normal was hatched on July 5th, 2019, and he arrived on September 10th, 2019. So he and Tuvok were not clutch mates, but they were hatched in July of 2019 by Joe Phelan, and they both arrived on the same day here. I purchased them together. I'm really thrilled with both snakes, but I'm super thrilled with Normal because he's turned out to be a phenomenal education animal and outreach animal. He not only target trains, but he does foraging exercises and puzzle feeds. He comes out of his enclosure on his own if I open the doors and he will explore. And I'm always able to get really great photos of him and utilize him in a lot of my educational videos. So I appreciate having a snake like him in our family and as part of our behavioral outreach team. I'm letting him take his time shift back in. You can see that he's got a full belly. He had two small mice during this training session. I don't always feed two small mice. Sometimes I might just feed him one or I might feed him two or three hopper mice or he might get quail or he might get a rat fuzzy. I do try to vary his prey. And there he is almost all the way in. Goodbye, normal. We will see you next time. And you'll see him in many more videos, don't worry.